percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, to our script, let's get right into today's video. The XRP and escrow is never going to get touched by retail. We've covered that in previous videos, but in today's episode, I'm going to really set the tone, put the icing on the cake. It's game over. The ECB, USDC, Circle, the DTCC, they're all involved. And Ripple XRP are building the backbone of the new financial infrastructure. And let's set the tone for today's video. We are going to go through some groundbreaking information that's going to completely shock you. But listen to what Christine Lagarde says here. She uses circle and ripples as an example. What are the odds in that? And I'm not, I'm not going to play the video where Brock Rollinghouse says yes to the stable coins. That has since gone viral since we have uploaded it. But let's just put the icing on the cake now. We know R3 and Ripple are still intact because there was an individual that asked David Schwartz talking about 10 things the XRP community needs to learn. And this was pretty much saying how XRP doesn't use XRP how R3 does not use XRPL. And he went on to reply and actually pretty much go against what he said and mentioned, to my knowledge, all of these are essentially true. There are some small exceptions such as this one, and it's a link to the R3 website where they talk about XRP being utilized as a settlement mechanism. And even in 2021, we had a CBDC stablecoin discussion at R3 where David Schwartz and the head of CBDCs at R3, they talked it out, which we're gonna get into in a different video. And here we have 40 billion XRP locked up in escrow as of November, 2023. And the circulating supply as of right now is 59 billion XRP. There isn't enough XRP to go around. And take a listen to this. Fedcoin, a central bank issued cryptocurrency. This is just a proof of concept. This is them just thinking. But look where we are today. And look where we are with XRP having regulatory clarity and all, all the big moves that it has done. This is going to be massive. This is going to give you the goosebumps. Listen to this. This is R3, what they were talking about. Essential bank Bitcoin peg. So a USDC could be pegged to XRP. The next solution is a pegged crypto coin. The most effective means of pegging a crypto coin to a central bank issued currency is to have the central bank itself underpin the entire scheme. One way to implement this scheme would be for the central bank to peg the price of an already existing crypto coin, such as Bitcoin. Wow. Okay, so that's what they were talking about. Okay, this is not some crazy stuff. And then listen to this. Look, look at this problem. This is what we always talked about, right? About XRP when it goes to $1,000. Does it matter? The third problem is that pegging the price of Bitcoin would set controversial precedent where every early adopters of Bitcoin who bought when its price is low are heavily rewarded by the central bank, pretty much it rising and rising in price. This could result in a spat of cryptocurrency launches as others try convincing central banks to adopt them. Wow, that is huge. An alternative way to create Fedcoin would be to pre-allocate the entire supply of tokens, say 100 trillion Fedcoin as an example. This block would immediately be awarded to the central bank to be held in reserve until they are required. Ripple has set the precedent for 100% pre-allocation. At its inception, the entire 100 billion XRP was created outright 
much of it retained by Ripple Labs, while the rest was auctioned off or given away. Remember what I always said, Ripple pre-allocated and they pre-mined the 100 billion XRP on purpose because they were coming into this sector from a banker's perspective, from a regulatory perspective, and what they can do to merge with the existing financial system. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and smash that like button. Central banks surely do not want to spend the time and effort building branches across the nation, which means they would probably want their partner with existing businesses that already have extensive physical networks. They're not gonna, the banks aren't gonna spend time building branches across the nations. That's their, like their technology. They're gonna go with private sector is what they're talking about. That is massive. A another potentially dangerous scenario is a Fetcoin hard fork. Say a large number of mining nodes agree to install a new version of the Fetcoin protocol while others choose to stay with the legacy protocol. The pros and cons outweigh what they're talking about here, but they referenced Ripple and its digital asset XRP. And here we have R3 and Corda since day one. And going back to why it's so important to have XRP in escrow. These reasons highlight why Ripple's XRP stands out in the financial and regulatory landscape. Predictability and stability. The escrow mechanism provides a predictable and stable supply of XRP, which is crucial for financial institutions and regulatory bodies. By releasing XRP in a controlled manner, this stability is particularly important for banks and the DTCC, which deal with large-scale, high-value transactions and require predictability in the assets they use. And of course, reduced volatility risk. The controlled release of XRP reduces the risk of sudden price fluctuations, making it more reliable asset for financial transactions. And then we know they're big in compliance and transparency since day one. Ripple's approach to XRP escrow demonstrates a commitment to transparency and regulatory compliance by voluntarily locking away a significant portion of the XRP and scheduling its release. Ripple provides a level of openness that can build trust with government entities and regulatory bodies. This transparency is critical for institutions like the DTCC, which operate under strict regulatory oversight. And then we've got to go back to liquidity management because without liquidity management or without liquidity in the markets, markets just do not exist. The escrow system helps in managing liquidity in the XRP market. For large-scale transactions, such as those handled by banks and the DTCC, having a stable and liquid market is essential. The controlled release of XRP ensures that there is sufficient liquidity in the market without causing sudden price drops due to oversupply. And if you think about releasing XRP, even when the price of XRP is $100, that XRP in escrow can be managed for decades to manage liquidity in the markets and the volatility in the price of XRP. Regardless, you still need a high value of XRP to make larger transactions. Second one is more complicated. It has to do with liquidity. So imagine that you have a pair of currencies for which there is not a, a complementary demand. You need to go and uh, search for a third party uh, uh, currency in order to make this, uh, this settlement actually happen. And this really complicates things. Uh, so we need to put pieces of technology that can uh, make more efficiency this use of liquidity so that more transactions can be settled. And getting on to the Polaris project by the BIS Innovation Hub where Ripple is involved, and they talked about escrow as well in here. And then go on to their updated one just released October 2023. Listen to what they said here. The design and implementations of an offline payment capabilities for CBDC system is complex undertaking. Some challenges and takeoffs cannot be solved easily despite the work of many central banks and private sector participants. Since each jurisdiction has unique requirements, there is no one size fits all solution but there is. We have the technology to allow every financial institution on the planet to settle with every other financial institution in a compatible jurisdiction in any asset in seconds for less than a penny. Just, just think about this. You, you, anyone who's made a payment knows that we're nowhere near that today. But imagine every financial institution settling with every other financial institution in seconds for less than a penny, any asset. That's fundamentally transformative 
We have the technology to do it. Now we just need to figure out how to drive the adoption. And of course, there's all the challenges with there's incumbents, there's regulation, there's inertia. And that's what they're doing behind the scenes right now. Here we have the DTCC selects Corda for Project Ion, where Ripple XRP is correlated with. R3's Corda powers first digital bond issuance on the Euroclear's digital financial market infrastructure, where the World Bank, Citibank, and TD Securities were all involved in this. They're all in this together. And then look at some of their partners. We got Montar Authority of Singapore, Morgan Stanley, MUFG, NASDAQ. We got Wells Fargo, SBI, all Ripple partners. We have six collaborates with the Swiss National Bank to pilot wholesale CBDC issuance in Switzerland. Ripple is massive in Switzerland, but just getting on to Project Helvetia Phase 2 from the BIS Innovation Hub, they're all in this together, right? Listen to this. The key design choices included the issuance of a wholesale CBDC on a DLT platform that is operated and owned by a third party while remaining convertible into traditional reserve balances. Operated and owned by a third party. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys and we will be back with another video. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.